revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. Welcome, and we're glad that you joined us this evening. This is our Bible study for Sunday, June 28, 2020. And we're so glad that you have an interest in studying the Word of God together with us tonight. My name is Mark Howell, and I'm the preacher for the Midway Church of Christ. Let me give you an invitation to our worship services. Now, presently, we're only meeting on Sunday mornings, but we do have two worship services on Sunday morning. The first begins at 9.30. It's in our auditorium, and it's for those who are 41 and above. Now, I want to remind you that our elders are asking everyone to wear a mask. They're asking everyone to practice social distancing. And the reason for that is we want to be as considerate of each other as we possibly can and do our best to keep from spreading anything to each other. Now, we also have a second worship service, and that is at 1030 in our fellowship hall. It's for those who are 40 and below, which would include our teenagers and our children. And we realize that there are some parents who perhaps are over 40 years old, but we're encouraging them to be a part of this second service, to worship their, with their family as, uh, as we meet together on Sunday mornings. Now let's go ahead and get started into our lesson for tonight. Let's review just a little bit, though, before we go any further. Two weeks ago, we talked about the fact that all of us need the truth. There were three primary passages that we looked at. The first is found in the book of John, chapter 8, at verse 32. There Jesus said, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We also looked at John chapter 4 at verse 24. There Jesus said, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And then John 17, 17, when Jesus was praying on the night before his crucifixion, he prayed, sanctify them in the truth, your word is truth. And so we know the need for that truth the Word of God is the truth. And so that brought us to last week when we talked about the first link in getting God's truth from God to us. And we noted that the first link is Jesus. And we noted a number of passages in, in regard to that. But let's review three of them tonight. Go with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. There the Bible says, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed the heir of all things, through whom also He created the world. In John chapter 12 at verse 48, Jesus made this statement. He said, The one who rejects Me and does not receive My words has a judge. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. And then John chapter 6 at verse number 68. There the Bible says, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And so this evening as we consider all of these passages, as we think about them, we understand and we know that, that the truth gets from God, but it comes first through Jesus. The Bible says that God spoke to mankind in different ways in times past, but now today speaks to us through His Son, and we will be judged by the words of the Son of God. And so tonight, if Jesus is that first link in the chain of getting God's truth to mankind, how uh, is the next step taken? What, who is the next link in the chain of, of getting God's truth to mankind? Now, we know that Jesus doesn't just whisper into our ears, and we know that He doesn't uh, do skywriting or, or send us a podcast every morning. So how is it that He does that? Well, let's go and look at a few passages of Scripture. What we want to do first tonight is think about some passages and answer some questions, and then we'll move on from there and discuss uh, some of the things that we deal with here at the first part of our lesson in a little bit more detail. Let's go to the book of John chapter 14 
And in that uh, chapter, we know that <clears throat> Jesus is telling his apostles that he is going away. This is on the night before his crucifixion. They have met together to observe the Passover. And now in chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, Jesus says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. So Jesus breaks the news. He tells them, I am, I am going away. But he doesn't just leave them alone. Uh, in one passage there in John chapter 14, he says, I won't leave you as orphans. But I want you to look at John chapter 14 at verse 16. Jesus says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Now, who is the helper that Jesus is asking the Father to send them? Well, if we continue reading in John chapter 14, down in verse 26, there the Bible says, But the Helper, and then he identifies the Helper as the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I have said to you. And so as we look at that passage and we read that passage together, it brings to mind some questions that we need to answer. Now, what are they? Well, let's look at this one first. Did Jesus say the Holy Spirit would teach them all things and bring all that Jesus said to their remembrance? Now, remember what he says in verse 26 of John chapter 14. Uh, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I have said to you. And so in answering that question, we'd have to answer that with a yes. That's exactly what Jesus promised to his apostles. And so as we look at that and we think about it, we know that it was a promise made and Jesus always keeps his promises, but, but he promised to, to do that for them. But look at a second question. When the apostles taught by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, were they teaching their own words or the words of Jesus? And so tonight, as we think about that and what Jesus has said, we have to answer that with they were teaching the words of Jesus. And so tonight, in John chapter 14, at verse 26, we begin to see another link, if you will, in the chain that gets God's truth from God down to mankind. Let's look at another passage in John chapter 16, at verse number 12. Jesus reminds his uh, apostles, he tells them, he said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Jesus had other things that he needed to tell them, but, but they wouldn't understand them at this point. They still at that point didn't understand about him about to be crucified. They didn't understand about him setting up the kingdom. And, and so it wouldn't be until after his crucifixion and resurrection and and his ascension back up into heaven, that, that these things would begin to become clear. And, and so he said, I've got to tell you these things, but now is not the time. But we go on in verse 13, and he continues on. He says, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. The Holy Spirit was going to, to tell them things that they needed to know, things they couldn't understand at that point, but the Holy Spirit was going to come and, and reveal things to them. Now let's look at this question. Jesus said the Holy Spirit would come and would guide the apostles into something, some kind of truth. Now, now what was it that he said? Well, according to the passage, Jesus said the Holy Spirit would guide the apostles into all truth. Now, if they had all truth, then, uh, then there's really not a whole lot of room for anything else. But let's continue on. Look at Jude verse uh, 3, only one chapter there. And so verse number 3, Jude writes, Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to, continue, uh, to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. 
Now Jude is the brother of Jesus, and he's writing a little bit later on in the in the first century, and and, and so he has he has something in mind that he wants to address some Christians about. Uh, but he saw that it was necessary. There were things that were happening that he needed to address. And, and uh, one of the things that he particularly says in that passage is that they needed to contend for the truth. But, but in contending for the truth, notice that he also said about that, that that truth had been delivered. Now, let's go to this question. Was the faith delivered in the lifetime of the apostles? Now think about Jesus had said the Holy Spirit was coming to bring them, guide them into all truth. And now Jude writes and says that that, uh, uh, the faith had been delivered and it had been delivered once for all time, delivered. And so as we look back at that question, was the faith delivered in the lifetime of the apostles? Well, the answer to that is yes. That's the only thing that could be. And so as we look at that and and think about it for a little bit, it would bring another question to our mind that we really need to answer. And that question is this. Since the apostles were guided into all religious truth in their lifetime, should we expect to receive any new revelations today? Is there anything new that we should expect to come? And as you can see, the answer to that is no. They've been guided into all truth. It's been once for all time delivered to us and therefore we shouldn't need anything else we shouldn't look for anything else and so as we've looked at these three and and answered uh, a few questions about them we see that the truth delivered by the spirit the holy spirit of god the truth the word came from god through jesus jesus ascended back into heaven and he asked the father to send the spirit who would who would remind the apostles and guide them about the things that Jesus had taught them and reveal to them all of the rest of the things that they needed to know. We see that link developing in the Holy Spirit of God. But I want us to continue on tonight and think about uh, some things in just a little bit more detail. Let's think about what is written in the book of Mark chapter 9 at verse number 1. There Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God after it has come with power. Now, we could talk about the kingdom of God, and we will later on, not in this lesson, but what I want us to focus on is the fact that Jesus said the kingdom would come with power, and there would be people who were there at that time who who were still alive, they would not die before that time happened. But but what is the power that Jesus is talking about? Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 1 and look together at verses 4 through 8. There the Bible says, and while staying with them, that's what Jesus was staying with the apostles, and while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait from the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. When they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has fixed in his own authority. But you will receive power. Remember what Jesus promised? You will receive power when? When is it that you're going to receive the power? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now notice that Jesus said some of them would still be alive when that power came, the kingdom would be established, but but he reveals in Acts chapter 1 verses 1 through 4 that that power would come when the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles. Now when did that happen? All we need to do is look at Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 2 beginning at verse 1. Let's read together through verse 4. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. 
and divided tongues as a fire to them, appeared to them, and rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. As you look at that, you, you note that the Spirit came. The power would come when, when the Spirit came. One thing we did not mention is the fact that Jesus said when that happened, that they would be His, uh, his witnesses. They would be the one who would pass along the message about Him in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and then into the uttermost parts of the world. Now, now, what was it when this Spirit came upon the apostles that they began to do? First of all, they had to defend themselves because there were some who accused them of, of, of not being very good men, of getting drunk and things of that nature. But as soon as they defended themselves against that, notice what they began to do. Staying in Acts chapter 2, look at verse 22, going through verse 24. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. What was it that they began to do? They began to be witnesses about what Jesus had done, things that they had seen with their own eyes, things that they were actually witnesses to. And so they're telling the people about Jesus, and they continue to do that. Peter, and primarily, we have his words recorded, but, but he tells them about Jesus. And, and notice how he ends his sermon. If we go on to verse 36, he says, Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Indeed, he was telling them about Jesus. And not only would he tell them about Jesus, he would tell them what Jesus had to say, as would the rest of the apostles. Now, thinking about that, let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, let's read together verses 9 through 13. There the Bible says, But as it is written, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined. Let's stop right there for a moment. There are some who will talk about this passage, and they will say, You know, uh, he's talking about heaven. Eyes haven't seen it. I can't even begin to imagine what it's all about. But in reality, as we'll see, that's not what he's talking about at all. Let's go back and continue reading. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. And remember, we're talking about getting the truth of God from God to us. And now Paul is writing, Paul being one of the apostles, he's writing about how he is getting that word, that mind, that truth from God. And so he goes on, he says, He is revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in him? You know, you can't know what I'm thinking unless I tell you what I'm thinking. You don't know what's on my mind. You're not a mind reader. You don't have that ability. And none of us certainly can know the mind of God unless God Himself reveals that. If you can't know a human being's mind, how can you know God's mind unless God tells us about His mind? We go on and say, For he knows a person's, for who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of the person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual." You see, Paul says that 
the Holy Spirit, when He came, He was reminding, as Jesus said, them of things that Jesus had said, but He's revealing the rest of that truth that they were not able before His death to comprehend. And Paul says, they, the apostles, had the mind of God delivered to them, the very thoughts of God, the things that God has in His mind, they were brought to the apostles by the Spirit. And so we see that beginning to play out in, in Acts chapter number 2. Jesus had talked about it prior to the time that He would be crucified. And, and after His crucifixion and resurrection and ascension back to heaven, we know that the Spirit did come. And we know that He brought the truth and He delivered all of that truth to the apostles. But continuing on, let's, let's think about again those passages that we began with tonight. Think about the Bible says in verse uh, 26 of John 14, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Jesus talking to the apostles. Look again at John 16 verse 13, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for He will not seek, uh, speak His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will declare to you the things that are to come. And then again in Jude verse number 3, Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. Tonight we have seen the second link in the chain that gets the truth from God to mankind. Sanctify them through your word. Your word is truth. And we know that the Bible says that God speaks to us through His Son. But the Bible also teaches that there has to be another link because when Jesus was here, He couldn't deliver everything because man just wouldn't understand at that point. And so, between us and Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Now, not only have we seen that second link that gets us from uh, the truth from God to mankind, but we've also gotten a glimpse into the third link. We've noted that the Spirit came to the apostles. And we're going to talk more about that next time, study more together about that. But tonight, as we, as we close out, let's remember that we have the link given to us from God, through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, and then next week we'll talk about Jesus getting the Holy Spirit to the apostles, which would become that third link. As we end tonight, let us pray. Holy and righteous Father in heaven, we are so thankful for all that you do. Father, we're thankful for your word, for the fact that you have delivered to us the very mind, your very mind, so that we can know for certain the things that we need to do and to obey in our lives. Father, help us to have an open and receptive heart that we might hear these things and that we might be willing to be obedient to Thee. Father, as we come before Thee tonight, we're mindful of many who are sick, some who have had accidents, some who have had surgeries and are recovering. We pray for each one, Father. We know that You know their needs, and we pray that if it's possible, they can be restored to their health. Father, as we come before Thee tonight, we're thankful for Your church. We're thankful in particular for the Midway congregation. We pray that You will continue to be with us that we can be a light to our community, that we can help others see Jesus as we live for Him each day. Be with our elders who lead us. Be with our deacons who serve. And Father, we pray that as we do things uh, in Your name, that we'll be pleasing to You. Father, we also pray for our nation. There's so much turmoil. There's so much that's going on. And we know that only you can help that only you are the answer. And, and we pray, Heavenly Father, that we might be able to spread your word, your gospel, the good news to others, that they might be able to understand and, 
and that Heavenly Father to enjoy the peace that passes understanding found only in your Son. Father, we ask that you continue to be with us each day and help us as we go through our lives. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again.